Near-Death Experiences, Part 3 Analysis and Explanations In 1983, psychiatrist Bruce Grayson created the Near-Death Experience Scale, also known as the Grayson Scale. This measurement tool helps to quantify frequently occurring details in NDE accounts using 16 common elements in four clusters. Experiences with scores of seven or higher are classified as an NDE. The four clusters are cognitive, affective, paranormal, and transcendental. Under cognitive, an altered sense of time, accelerated thought processes, scenes from past recurred, sense of sudden understanding. Under affective, feeling of peace or pleasantness, feeling of joy, feeling of cosmic unity or harmony, seeing or feeling surrounded by brilliant light. Under paranormal, senses more vivid than usual, extrasensory perception, scenes from the future, and feeling of separation from physical body. Under transcendental, sense of entering otherworldly environment, encountering a mystical being or presence, seeing deceased spirits or religious figures, and coming to a border or point of no return. Dr. Grayson says, some of the phenomenological features of NDEs are difficult to explain in terms of our current understanding of psychological or physiological processes. For example, experiencers sometimes report having viewed their bodies from a different point in space and are able to describe accurately what was going on around them while they were ostensibly unconscious, or that they perceived cooperated events occurring at a distance outside the range of their sense organs, including blind individuals who describe accurate visual perceptions during their NDEs. Additionally, if NDEs are the result of physiological processes, why do most people who are near death not have an NDE? Dr. Grayson gives an overview of his lifetime of research on NDEs in his book, After, published in 2021. According to Grayson, near-death experiences are fairly common. Some 10% to 20% of people who come close to death report them about 5% of the population at large. According to this estimate, this would put the number at approximately 16 million people in the U.S. alone. So what is going on? Grayson, who grew up in a scientific household and is not religious, says he doesn't know. But I think the evidence overwhelmingly points to the physical body not being all that we are, he says. There seems to be something that is able to continue after the body dies. I don't know what to make of it. In her 1993 book, Dying to Live, Dr. Susan Blackmore argues for a naturalistic explanation of NDEs. On her website, she writes, I believe that the NDE gives people a glimpse into the nature of their own minds. That is hard to get any other way. Although she was not near death, Blackmore had her own NDE in 1970. In her book, Seeing Myself, published in 2017, Blackmore recounts her NDE and marvels at its realistic nature while still maintaining her naturalistic explanation. Dr. Kevin Nelson also gives a brain-based explanation for NDEs in his 2012 book, The Spiritual Doorway in the Brain. In his 1996 article, Near-Death Experiences and the Evidence, a review essay, Professor Gary Habermas engages with Susan Blackmore's naturalistic explanations of NDEs. He focuses on evidential NDEs because Blackmore admits these could pose a direct challenge to her thesis. Evidential or veridical cases contain details that can be objectively corroborated by another witness. For example, Kimberly Clark Sharp, a social worker in Seattle, reported that a heart attack victim in Seattle named Maria claimed to see a verifiable object while she was unconscious. 
a blue tennis shoe with a worn little toe and a lace under the heel on a high external ledge around the corner of the building from where she entered. Blackmore finds this case fascinating, but unsubstantiated because she was unable to get further information. Habermas was able to gather the following information. First, Sharp had interviewed Maria on the same day of the NDE. Second, prior to her hospitalization, Maria had never been in the area of the hospital. Third, the shoe could not be seen from the ground. Fourth, the hospital was not surrounded by buildings of sufficient height to give a view of the shoe. Fifth, the, the worn toe and the position of the lace could not be seen from the window where Sharp found it. Sixth, Maria had also identified it as big, and the shoe was large. Seventh, when Clark brought it to Maria, she held it behind her back while Maria described it one more time. And eighth, the story was confirmed multiple times in later interviews. Habermas also notes that between 1993 and 1996, 19 cases of NDEs in blind people were discovered, including a congenitally blind woman who accurately reported items from her surroundings. The Self Does Not Die, published in 2016, includes more than 100 evidential NDE accounts verified by independent sources. So what do we know about NDEs? First, they are widespread. NDEs have been reported by children, adults, scientists, physicians, priests, ministers, among the religious and atheists, and from countries throughout the world. As we saw, Dr. Grayson estimates about 5% of the population at large has had an NDE. They are highly realistic. NDEers claim their experiences were more realis realistic than a dream. They are consistent. Comparing NDEs shows that they contain similar elements and come to a point of closure instead of having abrupt endings like dreams. They are corroborated. In the case of evidential NDEs, the experiencers' reports match with the objects or events in the physical world. They are unpredictable. Researchers don't understand why some have an NDE and others don't. Surprising. Many people who have had these experiences were not expecting them. And transformative. These are deeply personal and emotional experiences that lead to different attitudes, beliefs, and actions.